in horse racing, we love our animals. There's vets, there's attention, there's doctors, there's absolutely everything. There's rules in place. And we just love our pets, our animals. No, absolutely. You know, and if you're lucky enough to have the opportunity to go and see them on a however frequent basis, it just strengthens that, that bond, you know, to actually have that physical contact with them and get to know them, their quirky personalities and, you know, when they're difficult, etc. you know. So, unfortunately, it was part of, I used to commute to Joburg for, I stopped, I think, three years ago, but for 12 years I commuted, so I could go at least once a, a week, I, I could have the opportunity to go to, to die stable and go and see the horses there, so you still had a relationship, you know, um, unfortunately, we don't go to Joburg that often anymore, and so you, you kind of lose it, but you still love yeah. the horses, even though you're not seeing them. Welcome to another edition of In the Box Seat, uh, Sans Lenferno, who's <laughs> organised everything so that he's not here. But um, with me have two very special guests, trainer Mark Dixon, Marcus. Morning. Morning, how are you? <laughs> All the better to you. Kevin Rice. <laughs> Morning. I want you to tune him up. <laughs> you chis it. You chis it. What is chis it, Mark? I know, apparently it's an expression for somebody who originally comes from the great sporting city, Leicester. Are well, you from Leicester? Born and bred. <laughs> Shame. Yes, so apparently it's Chizit because they're always asking, how much is it? And, and, and when, I, when I mentioned this uh, on a little group with Hayley, she burst into laughter and she messaged back, that is so like him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not surprised you, trainer. You have to ask how much is it. You know? it's, it's not an easy game. I'm going to say so. Well, that's the, these days when you phone, all your phone does is ping, ping, and you look and it's already gone. Oh, gone, yeah, that's right. Um, Why well, we've got you here today, we want to do a bit of uh, uh, owner, owner, trainer relationship. Um, Kevin, why did you pick Dixon? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we first got into I first got into racing uh, way back in 2018 I think it was uh, through very close friends of mine up in Joburg, Desiree Diandrati and Scott uh, Gaskell and uh, the journey began there and because I live in Belita and they up there eventually I said no no it's time we had some horses down here yeah so we decided to do a bit of due diligence and clearly we didn't do enough. No, I've got to um, say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We came down, we spoke to a couple of trainers, and but immediately both our partners and ourselves just knew once we had been to the Dixon Yard that this is where we wanted our, our horses because of the love you could see that that they give to the horses. And while we were chatting, Haley would be loving the horses or Mark would then go off and do something and you could see it was just natural. It was certainly not a show. Yeah. So we just knew that we were in the, in the right hands no. and we're very glad that we made that decision. No, I don't think you'll regret it. No. <laughs> but uh, what do you say, Mark? <laughs> now, tell me something, uh, I want to know, uh, do you give Mark instructions on when your horses run? Oh, I'm not that brave. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Um, <clears throat> you know, my attitude is very simple. You know, you choose the trainer, you trust the trainer, and they make all the calls. Um, so... <laughs> who they want to put on the horse, when they want to race it. You know, I, of course, I will always try and contribute, yeah. uh, which is not interference, it's just a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> but I always qualify it. As, but as you know, it's always your call, <laughs> what you want to do. Um, and yeah, they make, make the calls, and hopefully it doesn't seem like interference other than interest and enthusiasm from my side. There's a few trainers around which they could clone you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can say that. Yeah, because I find it just very strange when I, mean, I listen to all the trainers complaining. So they, the worst thing they ever did was put nominations onto, onto a public platform. On the site. Oh, yes, mm. yeah. yeah, because they all know when are you nominated, it's going to run. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mark, how do you Look, go? <clears throat> Look, you know, it's great to have, and especially in this day and age, it's great to have new blood, so to speak, to, to show the enthusiasm that Kevin and Jay do. 
I mean, Desi and Scotty, originally they had the horses, but they've kind of still got theirs in Joburg now. So we've, we've got uh, a few horses that belong just to Kevin and Jay. So, but no, they're enthusiasm. They come up here every Saturday. Um, Jay, Kevin's partner, she always has a very large breakfast, which costs me a fortune every week. <laughs> And uh, they come and Just see the horses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much is that? So, you know, it's 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 nice to see that enthusiasm these days, and have people that take a massive interest and love their horses. And yeah, they do do or leave most of the decisions to myself and Haley. But you know, sometimes I like to say, well, you know, what do you think? Uh, especially as regards jockeys. Um, but. Obviously, we're all we're all in the same game, and we all like to think we we make the right decisions. But obviously, from time to time, that's it's 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 not going to happen, and uh, things do go pear shaped. But they're aware, well aware of the game, and you know that's a big thing. I think understanding of the game and look, things can go wrong, and the timing, unfortunately, always seems to be uh, <clears throat> trying to say the least. Yeah. Normally, you know, a horse can go wrong before it's going to run anyway they understand the game and love their horses so as you say they're they're um owners like that a, f a few and far between these days yeah yeah no because i've got a couple of friends there and they, they, they drive me mad i try to explain to them like the horse is not a machine yeah. you know mm. you, you nominate the horse um it's not going to run necessarily but just mm. in case You've got a, a backstop there. Absolutely. You know, Andrew, you opened up the <coughs> topic by saying the relationship between trainers and owners. And all I want to do is I want to qualify a relationship <laughs> takes many forms. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so mine started uh, where in the first week yes. um, I was treated with respect. And then he found <laughs> out that I've been supporting Liverpool for more than 50 years. <laughs> and it went straight from <laughs> went out the respect <laughs> to, a, to abuse. And that's how it's been ever since. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's... it's, it's uh, it's a way of the relationship that, that, that works like that and, and you become friends rather than mm. than clients, which is which is great. Mm. I find a lot of owners just get into the game mostly because they think they can get have a punt. Mm. Um, and then most of them want to it. Um, but that's just, mm. just the, the but, way the way game but operates. Maybe if they did smartly they can. And I think that there's there's lots of scope for small owners in little syndicates, partnerships. You know, um, one of the horses we're involved in is, is, let's call it a stable syndicate. There, there are a number of owners that, that are, are part of it. And, you know, we have, we have fun with it. And, and I want to tell you, anybody that's thinking of getting into this industry, there is nothing more exciting than being at a race course, even if you have to watch on TV and seeing your horse run there. And, boy, if you're lucky enough to get a winner to, to, to lead it into that winner's box, is yeah. just... Uh, a feeling you can't describe so so instead of saying well i can't afford to spend so much on a horse maybe what mm. they should be doing is, is is approaching the owners especially the smaller yards who, who don't get that much support sadly from the industry um but the smaller yards and and and, and, and say to them okay let us know for the next auction i'm prepared to put in ten thousand rand or five thousand rand or whatever they can then build up a kitty and and, and go look for a horse Yes. For, for, mm. for partnership yeah. Yeah. and then your ownership is dependent pro rata to, to, to what the cost was versus what your contribution was <clears throat> but, but you're in the game and once you're in the game you, you, I promise you if yeah. you don't enjoy it then don't even think about it in the yeah, first place basically. yeah but even if you've got 1% I mean it's, 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 it's basically your horse yeah. uh, I notice in Australia <clears throat> a lot of those, those top horses that look sort of mm, 100 hundreds. people in the, in, the, in, 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 the, in the syndicate I think I don't know if they have syndicate uh, um, managers within the, the stable, or they've got separate managers. But I think if the admin has put puts a lot of people off. Um, but but, but you're your manager, <coughs> your trainer. You don't need a, a, a separate person to, to actually do that. Yeah. You know, you can let the the yard run it. You know, yeah. um, they'll tell you how much you need to pay when and whatever, and yeah. they'll pay you your 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 stakes money and you know so you don't have to have somebody to manage it on your, on yeah, your side yeah. and and it, it, and if you go along the basis that you're going with the trainer because you trust the trainer 
um, and the decisions are theirs. You're not there to manage the trainer. Yeah. Yeah. So we all know that most trainers can't be managed anyway. But, <laughs> but, but if, it's, if it's, it's a case that you're going <coughs> entering the game on that, on that basis, you don't have to make it too clever that yeah. you have to have an outsider managing it for you. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Guess who's arrived? Do you know that good old saying, all good things come to those that wait? But the problem is that not, and none of you waited. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, have you, I, I don't want to hear any complaints from you, because all you do is you drive from your farm in Ashburton to Summerfelt once a week with no problems. Try to go to the airport, try to go to the harbour area on a regular basis, see what your nerves end up like. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to manage your farm properly. Well, there we go. But uh, nevertheless, sorry about the delay. We are here and uh, we look forward to, to joining in on your conversation. But uh, I might need to send a few speeding fines your way. <laughs> if you can help me with those. <laughs> How are you, uh, uh, Mr. Rice? Are you good, Kevin? I'm very good, thanks. Sorry, yeah. I see, again, you and I still haven't uh, changed our hairstyle, eh? No. Mark? Well, morning, 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 Warren. <laughs> okay, carry on. I'll, I'll enjoy the conversation with you. No, no it's, it's your, your turn. turn now. Is it my turn? Well, we were just um, syndicates. Okay. Uh, the way the economy is dealt as a bitter blow since COVID and things like that, yes, and yes. Uh, affordability, and to get more in pe more people involved in the game. You know, yeah. it's easy to say, but to get the uh, people that are keen. To come in, but uh, and I think that's a big thing. The the affordability, and, and and then we can attract more people into the game because all our numbers are yeah, are down, and it's not easy. But uh, you know, we we crack on, and that's definitely a way to go. I think what we should do, or should do is is, is a marketing strategy for about syndicates only. You know, mm. because there are so many syndicates, and I often say to people. Uh, you know, you don't. You can have five percent in a syndicate in a race source. You can have two and a half percent. You can have fifty-five percent. You can have a hundred percent. You know, you can, and then, and then it is affordable. And in actual fact, there was a gentleman I bumped into about two years ago. Said his dream is to own a race horse. I said, well, what is the problem? He said, to be quite frank, I can't afford it. I said, okay, well, a lot of us are in that same bracket, uh, but let's talk. And mm. now to this day, he owns two and a half percent in a, in a race horse that's won two races, and he's just loving it. Yeah. He's loving it. He says it feels like he's <coughs> the whole horse on his own. You know, so it is, it, it is something that we should actually hone in on. Yeah. So, we're in the context that I put it in, because syndicate can also sound like a a different word, yes. <laughs> you know, um, and I, I called it more stable partnerships. So, so you, you pick a, a stable that, that, that you want to invest in a trainer and then you contribute money, you all contribute money towards a kitty before the sales. Then, okay. then the trainer goes and buys a horse specifically, you know, for that based on the budget and yes. if mm. you're fortunate enough to get one. And, and the stable will manage it for you. So you don't have to do any admin, you don't have to do anything you know, um, any extra work. It's, it's just a case and you're in the game. So basically what you're saying, which actually is a good idea, is so before the sales, so like Mark Fogg and say, would get all his owners and say, okay, well, Kevin's <coughs> putting in five grand into the kitty, Andrew's going to put two grand, you know, and you say, mm. okay, well, we're going to the sales, we've got 85,000. Is that, is that how you say exactly. that? And if we get yeah. one, we get one, we don't, we exactly. don't. Go to the next, it's actually another so you go to the next one. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so you've got some sort of budget to play with. Yeah, yeah it's oh. a really good idea. That, that's how we managed to, to get spirited flocked. Yes. You know, it was on that, on that <coughs> basis that beforehand <coughs> Haley reached out to, to owners. The owners then said, okay, we've got so much, she knew how much budget. She went and she found a fantastic place, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I also find that the, the, like, um, the NHA, NHA fees are going to be horrendous as far as I'm concerned. Mm. You want to get colours. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's it's half the race was just to get your colours. Um, mm. I well, it is expensive. But, but, but even if you want to avoid that cost, then run in the, the stables colours, the trainers colours. I'm part of one syndicate, but there's a plenty of syndicate. No, I'm not under the lap at all. I'm a registered <laughs> member of the People's Syndicate. So, because um, somebody said the other, oh, but now we have to pay a cut. It's, you know, you're in, it's in, it's done. So that mm. is the right way to do it. You can have 40 people, I'm just using a number, you can have 30 people under the, the syndicate's name, you don't have to pay. But when we did, when we chatted to Stuart Ferry, who's now going to be a trainer, of course, mm, yeah. he was saying that every single one of his owners well, now have to, to get to act. Correct, at mm. 790 odd rand, 
it's a, it's a, it's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. A lot of another 40 money. grand but for the... And again, we're not knocking the NHA because we've discussed this before. Fees must be paid. You can't expect it to be done. But phew, it, it, in today's mm. day and age, it's, it's expensive. I mean, 750 rand for each an in individual owner of mm. stewards to now change a change of ownership, uh, authority to act. It's a heck load of cash. I mean, to get colours, it's... You say to somebody in the industry, well, you register your colours. Yes, I'd love to register my colours. It's 8,900, whatever it is. They say, what? You said, at that price, I'm out. You know, it's, mm. it's, it is a bit of a... a, a and, I, and I do respect the NHA that they have to charge fees, but maybe we need to re-look at these fees. You know. But um, I, I'm sure Andrew will, will shut me up if, if he's already asked this question. But, Kevin, you have the most unbelievable excitement, passion, love for the game. Um, has he asked you where it all started? Did I miss that question? Miss that question. Did I miss that question? Has that been covered? I'll watch, my, I'll watch our own <laughs> podcast later on. But <laughs> Mark and, and, and Haley and, and Diane, and, and you like to get involved with stables. You, you, you're obviously part of Mark's friends circle and family circle. Um, one of the very first horses I ever had a share in, uh, and Mark, now I want to test our knowledge uh, to see if I can remember mm -hmm. the horse's name. Mm -hmm. uh, it raced at Clearwood. Unfortunately, the horse broke down, um, but that's racing. Uh, so we also go back a long way, but they're just a wonderful stable to be with and, and, and just so great to race with. Yes, them. So, you know, I came in as a total novice, and um, so we've got horses with Diane Stinger from, 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 from day one, and she's still training a, you know, a few of ours, and also amazing horsewoman, does a phenomenal job, and you know, they all work so damn hard, you know, especially these smaller yards, people just don't understand how much effort, these guys don't go on holiday. Not because they can't afford to, which is probably that too these days, but, but be, be, because they, they are there seven, uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, they, they, they have to be there. But anyway, so from Diane and then obviously coming down here, you know, we, we chatted about earlier, you know, getting involved with, with the Dixons. We've been very blessed to, to pick the right trainers and, 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 you know, our partners up in Joburg were, were the way we got into it, you know, and I'm very thankful to Des and Scott for for that you know because it it is just fantastic and that's why i was saying you know to to be here and you come see your horses you know just about every saturday we'll be here we've brought friends and the kids along and they go and feed carrots with us you know every saturday and, and just the interaction for people that are not involved mm. with horses they all come over and say oh please can we do it again please can we do it again you know so it is the most amazing industry to be involved in and, and we're very blessed to be part of it that horse that we had, Philly, that we had that won a few races. Can you remember With Chad that? Cook. Yeah, yeah, oh no, and um, Shoot the Breeze. Shoot, uh, there was another one. And, um, Shoot the Breeze won three, didn't you? Yes. Two on the sand. Yes. The ball. <sighs> Philly, we had it with, uh, we released it from, from Pickering. Mm. Are we getting older? I still can't remember the horse that we had with Mark, but anyway, while we're thinking of those names, um, owners, Mark, it's, it's, you know, everybody's, we, I respect the fact that the horse is owned by the owner, it's their property, you know, if I own this bottle of juice, it's my juice, uh, I can do what I, I can pour it on the floor, I can throw it in the dustbin, I own it, uh, an owner owns his horse, but, <laughs> We, 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 it's important to have a good relationship with an owner, but what I'm saying is you do get some, some people that are different, some people that are, are hard to work with, some people that, you know, it, it's tough. And how do you find that as a trainer? I mean, you get Kevin, who's, and I'm sure all your other owners, who are passionate, they like to get involved, but I'm sure they're not telling you how to train the racehorse. Am I correct in that? No, it's, like, it's, it's, it's probably like the horses as well, you know, they're all different. Some like to get involved. Some really love the horses and not really too worried where they finish on, on, a, on a race day. People like, I've got Bruce Lynn who's been with me 20 years. Jeez. He's never been to the stables. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he doesn't even know sometimes what horses he's got, but he's been a massive supporter. Uh, Clint and Tanya Larson and his family, they've become massive family friends. He likes to get involved, he, but he used to come and see his horse. He's obviously moved to Belito now, but... You know, through a friend of a friend. No I mean, excuse, I live there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clint, get ya. <you. laughs> I mean, Colin Gordon from Four Racing, he introduced 
Clint to me, okay. and and Gary Cumming, another good friend in that. You know, and it, sometimes to be careful what I say, certain trainers attract certain people. Yes, yes. Um, and over the years, we've made some massive friends and had really loyal yeah, patrons. Yeah, yeah. Other people, you know, a lot of people like to move around a lot. You don't get the results yeah. or something goes along, they're, they're, they're down the road. The, the, but the point I'm making, Mark, is specifically is to, to, to tell the owners out there, because it's, it's such a hard life and it's such a hard game, is that, I mean, I know if I'm an owner, uh, he's a, uh, an owner, we, we're all owners, but we like to get involved. There are animals, there are pets, there are horses, there are, you know. But at the end of the day, I firmly believe you're always entitled to give a contribution or an opinion. But at the end of the day, the trainer knows his or her oats. You know, when you go to a dentist, if you've got a root canal, you don't say to the dentist, now, right, before I sit in your chair, this is where you're going to inject me. This is how you're going to drill. It's there. It's definitely there. It's not here. Uh, you know, and when you do it, make sure you do it at the cheapest possible rate that you can do it. Don't hurt me. By the time you've finished with all these instructions, the dentist, and I, if I was a dentist, I'd go somewhere else. So that's the point I'm making is just, to, to, you know, you, everyone's entitled to get involved and enjoy it. But at the end of the day, leave the trainer to do his job. Well, the thing mm. is, you had no authority to act. So, so that's, that's exactly what you're doing, yeah. theoretically. Yeah. Correct, correct, correct. This horse that won just the other day, have you touched on that story yet? No. 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 Okay. Good. Right. The flying fish, <laughs> the gliding fish. The gliding fish. But now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you both know your breeding. I did that mare Connemara Black, correct. because I had a share in a horse that was also out of Connemara Black. I'll get the name. We're all forgetting names this morning. It must be a fish one. You know what Connemara Black is? Yes. They were fishing. Tell us about that. It's yes. a fly. Yeah. A fly. Okay. And, and Peter and Jenny have been very Shout clever. Fly. They mm. named that whole family. Uh, after flies. All the offspring have been named after yeah. flies, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So tell us about how did you find the flying fish, uh, the gliding fish rather, I'm thinking of the beers we drink, the flying <laughs> fish, the gliding fish. Tell us that story. Um, so that horse was originally at Diane Stenger's stable. Okay. And uh, this belonged to Peter White. And then sadly he passed away and fortunately he left it to, to her. So I was advised um, that maybe I would like a partner in it. So I approached her and she said, yes, she'd love to have a partner. So it started off and there were, there was another partner who was a farrier. So we all had a third in the horse, which was fantastic. And he was injured uh, for, for a long time. I mean, he's very lightly raced. I think he's had four, five races as a four-year-old. Um, and because he was injured, we had to be patient, patient, patient. And he had three months box rest and eventually got out and then I found out later on that um, sadly the farrier had passed away you know he, I was very close to you better be careful though <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, dear. <laughs> so I said to Di well, you know would you be interested if if I picked up half you know so she said yes I said right well tell me what he hasn't contributed for that period of time I'll pay you that and then we 50 50 and then he had his first race, he came third of the uh, work riders. Uh, his second race was Pierre Stradamon. Uh, he, he won. Brilliant, brilliant ride by Pierre. You know, he's, he's just an amazing jockey. And then was shortly after that, um, Di had interest to buy the horse from Mauritius. And she asked if we'd consider selling. And the price was that, that was being talked about was decent. Um, and then I said to Di, do you really want to sell? She said, yeah, she thinks it's, she, she wants to do it. And I thought, no, I'm not sending a horse to Mauritius because I don't know what's going to happen to it when it's post-racing. So, can't have that on my watch. So I said, okay, Di, what, what uh, offer was spoken about, I'll, I'll pay you that, your, your, your half. And then we brought him down here. And then sadly, just after he arrived, um, I think Mark took him out for one little bit of work and then noticed something wasn't quite right. And, we think it might be that his previous race, uh, he had a hard race, uh, it was at the Vol, the track was like concrete. And, and anyway, came down and two days later, whatever, Mark said, mm, I think we've got a problem here. <laughs> so I said to him, That's Mark, all you wanted. Yeah. 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 I said to him, Mark, Mark, I'm telling you, this horse has got a few wins left in him. Play the long game, doesn't matter how long it takes, do what you've got to do. Just take your time and, and get him there. And what an amazing training job, I mean, Mark has done from last run in August last year to come out and, and he, 
he had a, a great win, great ride by Keegan, very great ride by Keegan, but you know, the horse was still not quite at, at, at its best. And as Keegan said, you know, so I think there's lots of scope for improvement. Mm-hmm. And fortunately, he pulled up sound, and it's because he's mm-hmm. been well looked after. Doctor. It's never been pressured. Yeah, I, I saw him in there. I was going to tip him, and I thought, no, Mark's got to practice at least once. <laughs> 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 yeah. The Springboks practiced before the game. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Mark. 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 Uh, and Clifton Stud, they breed a fabulous horse. Let's touch on them for a moment um, because Peter and Jenny and um, Christine, just wonderful, wonderful people. And I had the privilege of going up to Clifton one day. Uh, uh, Candy said to go and take some photographs, and there was um, Kevin, and uh, we actually had a fantastic evening. Many jars. Sunk, uh, lots of conversation, lots of good food, lots of lovely horses. And Shame, you went to go and see your mare foaling, and of course, she never foaled, never foaled. And I think the day you left, she foaled. Uh, no, it was a couple of days later. It was a couple we of days we days didn't synchronize our diaries properly, <laughs> Mary Lee Mullins and myself. So, but uh, fortunately, um, uh, they recorded it all for me, uh, and what a beautiful little cult we've got there. He's a stunning specimen. Is he by? Um, Act of War. Mm. And Jay came up with a fantastic name for him. Uh, uh, this is also we are obviously in partnership yes. with, with, with Scott and Dez. Uh, you know, the breeding we do with Scott and Dez, it's, it's not us on our own. And um, we were looking for a name and she came up with Raw Factor, which is almost a perfect anagram for Act of War. Okay, you know, raw factor. Raw factor. Uh, okay. R-A-W. Oh, R-A-W. Okay, raw factor. Raw factor, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, um, Des and uh, Scott, they decided a few months, or, or a while ago, there was an opportunity to buy Mary Me Mullins from, I think it was Summerhill at the time, and they said, do you want to go in? I said, yes, definitely, and, and so we brought her down. So from, from that, so we've got a, a horse still racing, Marby, uh, who's an act of war, Mary Me Mullins, won three times for us. She took a break, she was injured, she's coming back in a month or two's time. And, and then we've got a two-year-old uh, from Mary Me Mullins called, uh, by Heck Quintana, called Month of Sundays. It's up with Diane now, it's just got Daisy started to play. <coughs> then we've got a, a cult act of war, uh, Mary Me Mullins, <laughs> called Lord of the North, who's up there. Uh, uh, yet again, and then we got raw factors. So, so this will be our, our third progeny from since we became, you know. We'll have, we'll have to start calling you Kevin Matum. <laughs> <laughs> Shake your booty. Shake your booty. <laughs> Shake your booty. <laughs> but you know, just, sorry, Kev. Yeah. Just getting back to that um, gliding fish. Yes. I mean, it was a bit of a nightmare, and, and, and yeah, well, seven months is a long time, but we earmarked this race when he came sound and he was back in full work, and obviously, as trainers, it was. You know, every time you give him a piece of fast work, you, the breath. next day when you want to trot him out, you yeah, think, you please, please God, because <laughs> if he goes lame again, you know, you're back to square one. But anyway, obviously that never happened. And he came sound. So that's why we were so excited. I mean, we said to Kevin, where are we going to watch the race? Which is right by the lollipop with that big screen. And your missus was there. And I clocked her watching her. Of course, he, he and Keegan, Keegan, at his best, he hung onto that horse's head because he knew he'd get tired. And he gave him an exceptional ride. Of course, he passed the lollipop in front. He wins. I turn around. We're all hugging each other. And the mistake I made was, in my rejoicing at the moment, was I hugged Kevin. A Liverpool supporter. So afterwards, I, said, <laughs> I saw Candice and I said, the first thing, we'll just finish our champagne. I said, Candice. Because, yeah, so if you've got a photo of me hugging a Liverpool supporter, delete now. <laughs> She says it's too late, I've just put it on Facebook. Yeah. I'm still yeah, on the It was a great picture. Did you see it? Have you seen it? Oh, we must find it. Trust me, picture. despite his banter, I felt yeah. his love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I don't live in Uganda. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a lovely story. Though. I saw that a great photo. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, that, that picture. Although you don't want to be, uh, and I don't know anything about soccer, but you don't want to be associated with a Liverpool supporter, uh, <laughs> that, that picture just shows the relief, the love, the, the friendship. That is, we should be using those photographs for adverts, you know, to yeah. say this is racing, this is the, 
you know, and, and caption it and, and tell the story because you're as the trainer, what an achievement, what a relief. You take a big deep breath, shoo, you know, it's done. You're as an owner, you've paid, shown the patience, you've waited, you've got that reward. Uh, and yeah, it's not about whatever race it was, it's, it's just for me, any race to win is a good race. Made in qualified, made in group Absolutely. one, any race is a good race and you rejoice just as much. But uh, uh, Mark, you must have, when, when you had this issue with the horse, and, and you speak to your owner and he says to you, your owners, uh, Jay as well, uh, you speak to the owners and they say, whatever you need, take the time, no rush. You must mm -hmm. sort of, after you put that phone down, you must think, well, Sherbert, that's, well, that's you know, what a soldier. That's the many a true story about a good horse, you know, people don't know the, who, who owns them and it's very important because you, you're always on the phone and sometimes, you know, it always, when you pick up the phone, it's always bad news. It just goes yeah. like that, yeah. this and that. And you, and, I mean, days in the past, I, I just didn't. It's an awful job. Yeah. You just don't want to do it, you know. Yeah. But uh, more bad news. This has gone wrong. That's gone wrong, and that. But no, with uh, with him, obviously things went well. But it was a trying time. And other people might say, "Well, what's the diagnosis?" Well, we don't really know at the moment. We can't really find out exactly what people will call it a day. Say, well, you know, we're not prepared to take the time and. Find it at home or whatever, and also disappear. But, but you, you, you yeah. know, sad as, as you say, with when you phone owners and uh, in general, you phone and say, you know, your horse has done this, your horse has coughed, and I suppose after the fourth or fifth time, it's it's <laughs> it's human to get a little despondent. It would be the same as yes. if Haley phones you and says, Mark the geezer's uh, leaking, mm. and then tomorrow she phones you and says the car's got a puncture, and then she phones you the washing machine. Eventually, going to say, turn it up, we got enough now, you know. Yeah. I suppose it's it's if you put it into that context, but. Okay, so, so yeah, it does make your job a lot easier when you've got the owner's patience. What I want to hear from you uh, is, and Kevin as well, Keegan DeMello. Now, you've had a, a very long relationship with him, and uh, so have I. Uh, he is just the most wonderful, wonderful human being. You probably had a longer relationship with him, but wow, you've got to, as I called him the other day, your second son. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, didn't think I, I, hope was, I, I didn't think I was that old. But, uh, <laughs> but I hope you give him a hard time, though. Do you give him gears? He <laughs> yeah. needs gears. He don't, needs you his... don't see him often enough. But, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, in his early days, you know, he stood out like a... Sort of Donkey's thumb. Yeah. Like a Lester support. Yeah. Big balls. No. <laughs> Great attitude, good work ethic. And he could ride, you could see. He's quite laid back, Mark, and I think that's... Yeah. that's You've got to be laid back. You've got to be, able, you know, you've got to have nerves of steel. You've got to be laid back. Very. He's so laid back. He's horizontal. Yeah. <laughs> no. And we were, we were fortunate. We were the. He rode his first feature race winner for us in Joburg and showed me the way. I think it was. Yeah, and his parents were there, and in the, you could always tell he was gonna. He's gonna be top draw. And this season he's just proven it and he? he's can do nothing wrong and he's 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 improved immensely i think for the last two years and when he gets off a horse now his feedback mm, i think he's uh, my wife I mean, she, she loves it she's, uh, yeah and he always he, and it's always nice that he remembers uh, kevin in his interviews he always touches base about all the support that he gets but in particular when he rides the winner for the dixons he, you know because, yeah, it, 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 I can feel it in the, in, the, in the winner's box. You can yeah, feel the vibe off him and off Mark and everybody. It's special. You know, they, these relationships and bonds are, are really hard to find. And, 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 yeah, Keegan is just an absolute super. But also, you know, with those, those top jockeys, they, can, they give you the right feedback, mm. uh, which is immensely helped to the trainer. Exactly. Yeah. It's massive. Mark, yeah. I want you to tell us the story. You've got... Uh, Behind every good man is a good woman. Uh, there's a, I want you to talk about her and how, well, how did you meet and because and, and she's firmly part of your business. Yeah, massive. I suppose I should say I'm very lucky. <laughs> she, she would like me to say I'm very blessed. When I say I'm very lucky. Yeah, no. Now I met her when she worked for the for the vets. Okay. She worked for Baker Mac Ray. Okay. And uh, she worked for Bourne Marshal for it. After, no, after me. Yeah. 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 And um, I'll never forget, just a briefly, I, I, I asked her out, and I think we were going to the, the show ground, what that show at Maritzburg? Yeah. The Royal Show. The Royal Show. The Royal show. I sat it down, she was going to the Royal Show, and I thought, well, would you fancy coming out? She said, yeah, she, surprisingly, she said yes. <laughs> so, um, 
And then she phoned up that evening and she had some excuse, like some smoke or the car would blow up and I put the phone and I thought, ah. I thought, why do these women make these excuses? Why did this just say no thanks? And Anyway, it turned out that it was a true story. Something had blown up and she couldn't and she was late. Anyway, she made the effort and, and made it and say the rest's 23 years later. The rest is history. It's, it's Amy's fault that he's still here because he was only <laughs> out from the UK for a short while <laughs> and then he met Amy and yeah. here we are. <laughs> and of um, course, she's, um, a, yeah, she's, yeah, she's a massive, massive part of the stable. Yeah, I know she's. I remember that's the horse that Graham Walkins had a share in that she used to go with a packet. Yeah, African uh, Dream. African Dream, yeah. And uh, she went to the start, you guys, you worked mm. so, you know, you worked out exactly how to get the horse right and what worked and what didn't work yeah, What happened to African Dream? Passed away, I think, didn't she, she, just, she was walking down here, third lot, the groom was leading her. She reared up, it wasn't the groom's fault, he didn't pull against her. She reared over and smacked the back of her, the back of her head. And I, I was standing there, right? And I thought, ah, she's going to get up. Oh, she didn't get up. And blood started coming out of her nose. And she, that, she, that bone at the back yeah. of her neck had severed her spine. And in two minutes, she was gone. gone. And oh, I had yeah. to go. And that was her favourite ever horse, that horse. And I had to go home and tell her. That was one of the... And that's the other side of the game. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. Because she, oh, no, it was... Yeah. People, also, yeah. we, you know, you, you talk about, like, you use Bruce, uh, Mr. it is Mr. Bruce Lynn, isn't it? Yes. Bruce, I've never, I'm such terrible with names, but I, I'd hate to call him the wrong name. But Mr. Bruce Lynn, you say 20 years he hasn't been to the stables, but he loves every one of his horses, mm. you know, and, and, and he wouldn't be paying and still be with you for 20 years mm. if he didn't love it. Let's talk about that because, and the love for the animals, what it's about. You know, not, as I say, not everyone loves the, the animals, but some differently. There's Mr. Lynn, he doesn't come and visit them, but he's paying for them and he's keeping them for 20 years. He clearly loves them. That's a big thing that, that we also need to drum out to the public that in horse racing, we love our animals. There's vets, there's attention, there's doctors, there's absolutely everything, there's rules in place. And we just love our pets, our animals. No, absolutely, you know, and if you're lucky enough to have the opportunity to go and see them on a however frequent basis, it just strengthens that, that bond, you know, to actually have that physical contact with them and get to know them, their quirky personalities and, you know, when they're difficult, etc. you know. So, unfortunately, it was part of, I used to commute to Joburg for, well, I stopped, I think, three years ago. But for 12 years I commuted, so I could go at least once a, a week. I, I could have the opportunity to go up to, to Dice Stable and go and see the horses there. So you still had a relationship. You know, um, unfortunately, we don't go to Joburg that often anymore. And so you, you kind of lose it, but you still love yeah. the horses, even though you're not seeing them. So I'd encourage any owner that's able just to get out there and just go to the stables. Just to arrange with the trainer a convenient time, because they obviously train in different strings and whatever, you're not to pitch up and your horse is not there. And if you want to go watch it do some work, it's just, it just gets that relationship that much better, you know, stronger. I just find it very strange, I mean, just from Ashburton, I go there every morning. Very, very seldom do you see an owner pitch up to go and mm. watch his horse. It's, it's, yeah. it's weird. But you know, you know, especially they live in Marisburg, it's two hours down the road, but they never come to visit. I mean, I just want to. You know, Miss Andrew, I think we're closer to you. are hundred percent right, but uh, I was a little bit more actually afraid to go to. Okay. Yeah, but as long as you oh, communicate, no, but you communicate to your trainer, I want to come and see the horse. I, if you say to your trainer, I want to come and see my horse every single day, that's fine, but let him know, or her know. Yeah. You don't just pitch up, but you know, because it can be done. But what I'm saying to you is that a lot of people, what I've realized is that it's, it's, it's a rat race out there, and it's not an excuse, but it, it's a reality. People are running from meeting to meeting, from place to place, traffic, airports, and it's just terrible that uh, maybe they just You've can't get there. Uh, you know, we're not all mountain goats from Ashburton. Yeah, but you can still hill. do it on a weekend. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's why I say it's not really an excuse, but I think the reality yeah. is that people are under pressure It's nice to see here at, at Summerfelt, you know, there, there are a number of owners that come out and, and yes. have a look. I know because Michael Roberts shares the ring with, with with Mark and he does his one string before Mark's, Mark's come in. So we're often there a little bit earlier and chat to Michael and, and whatnot. And then one or two of these uh, owners that come regularly, 
just after he, he, he won that great great one win down in, in Cape Town on uh, See It Again. Uh, that Saturday, I arrived there in his ring and there's like 20 people. And I just said, like, you see, Michael, you win a grade one and, <laughs> and all the owners are showing an interest, you know. <laughs> I think it was just coincidental, but it, yeah. it, it was, you know, if, if, if they can make the, the effort, I, I, you, you'll get the reward. And I'm not saying it benefits the, 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 the trainers too much, but it certainly benefits you as the Michael mm. for the breakfast that day. Um, I believe Probably Michael not. has never bought a breakfast ever. <laughs> Mark Dixon told me that. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Okay. And then the, our, 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 our directors and producers and team have given me a quick schedule, but they've also told me that we time is of an issue because there's trainers meetings and things. So I want to ask yes. you very quickly, comment your two kids. You must be so proud of uh, Callum especially. Both of them, yes, I know, but Callum's in racing, <clears throat> your daughter's not. Yes, super super proud of Callum, the, the, what he's achieved in, in a short space of time. I think he's been eight, nine winners now, battling with his weight a little bit now, so he's always going to come to an end, but no. He's, uh, <clears throat> we're, we're both very proud of him, the way he's, he behaves, and must get it all from his mother, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but then, Carius uh, as well, I mean, academically, she's ex Excellent, and her dancing, is her, <laughs> <laughs> her dancing is different level. I still love to go and watch her. We're very, we're very fortunate and very proud of both of them. Yes, yeah, so your no, daughter's dancing definitely comes from you because I've seen you on the dance floor at the Jaws and doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> the moves. Uh, uh, how's your son doing? I see he's uh, with uh, Alex uh, Rymel Hulls. He's in Seychelles catching big fish. When are you off to this going to the Seychelles? He tells me he can't afford she's to get to Pine Town, but he's yeah. going to the Seychelles. Oh, well, Rory's paying. Yeah. Okay, so it's the right price. That's sponsor the right trip. Price. Sponsor, sponsor trip. trip. When are you going soon, is it? Second of May. There we go. But the kid's all good. Yeah. Um, Jay, we must quickly touch on Jay, your, 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 your lady. Your, 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 your. She loves the racing. I mean, I, when she was in the winner's box the other day. She, uh, she was just so happy. He's lost his knob. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> well, you must understand that Jay's Lebanese, so she has to love racing. I mean, <laughs> and she's, she's always, from, from, since we know her, you know, likes to have a little punt. And when I say a little punt, I mean, if she goes five rand each way, it's, it's like... It's good fun. She goes ten rand each way. It's a big, big I, well, then it's I'm a there, so yeah, um, But she's always, also, always loved the horses. Um, hates to be in any limelight, like, like, like me, but you're forced to do interviews after post-race. Um, but yeah, she, she absolutely loves it. And she's incredibly patient with, with the horses. She's taught quite a number of horses to eat carrots. That's, that's like her mission. If a horse won't eat carrots, so I want to teach you. <laughs> and the joy she gets out of seeing a horse that never had a liking for carrots, now scoffing them all down regularly. Oh, lovely. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, before we do a, a quick fire questions, we, we love just having a little bit of fun as we start to wrap up. But I want to ask your opinion, Mark, and again, you can't mention every single person and every single owner, but another family of owners that have been very supportive of you is the Carlisles. Yeah, massive. I mean, I think we were, we were, initially we were circumstances, we were fortunate. Uh, Mary came along and, <coughs> and Averson obviously and uh, said they're going to send us a couple of horses and we've had a lot of luck with them. They breed their own, get massive enjoyment out of them. Yes. And of course we, we lost Averson but then Kian was still very keen to, to carry on yeah. and, and Mary and uh, the whole Kidmount team. Um, oh, just wonderful people to train for. I mean you can't get better than that. Oh, I mean, that it borders are nice. We've got a very nice juvenile Lancaster bomber oh, on the race. Okay. Um, so no, wonderful people. Very fortunate that uh, they chose us to train the horses for them. So no, they're yeah, good. The, the Lancaster like, bombers are in demand, I believe. Mm, they can run. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on now to our quick fire questions, and you're going to be part of the game today too. Okay, so there's a whole list here, so I'm, what I'll do is I'll just start, I'll go Kevin, Mark, Andrew, Kevin, Mark, Andrew, until the list is finished. So I'm going to mention a word, or two or three words, I'm going to mention a phrase, let's call it, and I want the first thing that comes to your mind. 
And we've got to keep it tidy, boys. We've got to keep it tidy, okay? <laughs> It's going to be. T- <laughs> it's a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky, but uh, quick fire questions. I'm starting with you, uh, Kevin, <clears throat> and I'm just going to tell you, South Africa. Trouble. <laughs> we're in, we're in trouble because of the lack of political leadership in this in this country, and it's sad because it is just the most amazing country. So it is. trouble and concern. Okay, well, the stats are all there. I was talking to, you know, Ricky and Tora, they were with us last night, and uh, we were discussing about the eco- e- economy of, of our country, and yeah, it was quite eye-opening. Mark, I'm moving to you. United Kingdom. Cold and wet. <laughs> uh, Grumps, are you ready for yours? Yeah. World Sports Betting, Triple Tiara and Triple Crown. What am I supposed to say? Uh, you know, five seconds. <laughs> 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 no, well, it's great. It's great that Will Smith's video come on board, but uh, that triple crown, I think, is a misnomer. Okay, next, uh, Kevin, <laughs> load shedding. Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> Eskim. <laughs> Three words. <laughs> Marcus, uh, horse racing in England. National hunt, jumping, wonderful <laughs> racing. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> yes, it'll jump you up. Absolutely. Well, well, well answered, boys. Music. Uh, no, not, not for you, music. Okay, you answer music. Music, Led Zeppelin. Yeah, well, Led Zeppelin. Oh, yeah. Kevin, favourite race course? Um, Scottsville. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus? Um, childhood? Trouble. <laughs> yeah. Tip round the ear. <laughs> Tip round the ear. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I'll come back to you. It's his. child abuse. It's ADD now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Before we carry on, are you? Are we going to see you? I mean, these are your mates here. I mean, uh, our mates. Are we going to see you a bit more often at Summerfeld now? Not for the podcast, uh, for breakfast <coughs> and coming to walk around here. Well, I've been told I'll have to come because... Uh, I've well, already sent him an invite. Have you? Because yes. my new neighbour is Duncan. He's big China. Yes. And I've got... Couple of cold ones for them. Okay. Waiting, waiting. Yeah. Good. Okay. Am I allowed to join? Can I come to you? Sure. Okay. Good. Because uh, yeah, all the all the Ashburton <laughs> cronies are coming down, so you'll see us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. You and but you and Duncan go back years. I mean, you and Dunks, you both <laughs> you, you both grumps, aren't you? Lowell and Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to the last couple ones. Where was I with you? You said childhood uh, trouble. Clip yeah. around there. Clip yeah. around there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Andrew sports. Sports. Mm. Kevin, <laughs> friends. Uh, do I have any? <laughs> He's a scouser. I'm blessed with special friends. Thank you. Okay, lovely. Scouser. Uh, Marcus. <laughs> you might pull your friend in. <laughs> Starting stalls. Difficult. Mm. <laughs> Starting stalls. Trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, TikTok. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I wanted to ask you that because I knew we'd get that response. You haven't got a TikTok account? No. So you, you don't take videos and all that thing, not for you, right? No, as soon as I finish working for Gold Circle, my Facebook account will disappear as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a social media man. It's Netflix. I can't do that. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Uh, watch a lot. There is a series at the moment on Netflix called The Surgeon's Something. Have you heard of The Surgeon's Knife or The Surgeon's Cut? I believe it's outstanding. I don't do TV. The only thing I watch is racing on TV. But we must look at the... Uh, 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 you know, tell about, it's about a brain surgeon. And mm. uh, if, apparently my wife tells me it's a phenomenal watch. Mm. So, uh, mm. She's like around here. I need a brain surgeon. Slowly, <laughs> slowly, slowly. Yeah. It's not <laughs> part of the script Maybe here. Maybe you can get group discount. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it tidy. <laughs> yeah, this is not part of the script. Now, uh, just a couple of left here. Uh, cats. Oh, no, we've got too many. Yeah, I was trying <laughs> <laughs> right, too many cats. Mark Justin Bieber. Oh, Jesus. Awful. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he even knows who he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, me, let me throw in another one. Oh, one, one, <laughs> one, one little prat. Looked like it while I went. With newspaper. Yeah. Let me add on another one while we add it. Justin Bieber. What about uh, Harry Styles? Who's he? 
Oh, I know that one, yeah. yeah. Didn't he come from Britain's Got Talent or something? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't know. No, 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 I'm the player. old school. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, no, it's Harry Maguire. <laughs> Harry Styles is football, no, he's not. Oh, he's a singer, isn't he? That's football. football. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, and, Harry uh, Redknapp. That's, uh, that's our list. That's our list. Okay. Guys, yeah. Sweet. Uh, always have a bit of fun. We've got to have a bit of fun. And uh, you did say that you, the two of you would... Uh, so, just get in. So, Liverpool is your team, and he is? Leicester. Leicester. Okay. Mm. Foxes. <laughs> and I suppose there's banter when they're, they're playing a different... You know, you, you guys yeah, I said, you know, season or so ago, we were flying. And this season, we had a shocker. So, before where we were talking about, you know, whose team was better, we now debate about whose team's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's still got the edge on me. Shocking, yeah, I think so. Oh, mm. uh, no, but uh, yeah. gentlemen, uh, just before we wrap up, and I thank you, I just must acknowledge our sponsors, as always. Again, sorry for being late, but sure, uh, I, I, I'm going to be late for my own funeral one day. That, that's, uh, that's how I go. But anyway, to our sponsors, I'm wearing the Card Call shirt today. It's a Tab Gold Card Call. Um, the card draws get done every hour, and uh, it's uh, you go up to the tote windows at the Tab Gold outlets, and they will give you a quick mix or a quick pick or whatever you want to call it but go and have fun and go and enjoy it and see what uh, if you can get the lucky cards and of course there's the score six and score ten uh, all the various soccer bets of course you know there's that qr code that you need to go up and have a look at on our website and on our social media platform scan it and take you straight to the tag gold websites and just all the different betting uh, operations out there but thanks to our sponsors for all that they do for us talking about what they do for us to wrap up kevin uh, and to Jay and to all the owners out there, uh, I get nailed sometimes because I make a point of in the interviews honing in on the owners and thanking them on a, a live platform. But I, I said to that person who, who criticized, I said, you can do it to the purple in the face because every time I have an owner in the winner's box, I'll make their time bright because for me, yes, the jockeys, the punters, the breeders, everybody plays a role. But at that specific moment, the spotlight is on the owner. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Marcus, um, <coughs> yeah, to, to all you guys, all the best. Thanks for your time. And, and what a beautiful friendship and a beautiful working relationship you guys have. And, and yeah, just <coughs> thanks for your love of the game and your support of the game. And just because it's tough times in the country, in the industry. But we fight on and we love every second of it, don't we? Absolutely. Yeah, no, thanks, Warren. I love you. Grumps? Stick a cork in it for this guy. Have you had breakfast yet? <laughs> See what I've got to put up. Oh, with. Chad. You've tried, eh? You didn't wait. No. Okay. <laughs> no, nice to see you too. That's a wrap from all of us. Next week uh, will be, uh, I'm not sure what next week will be. We live day by day and uh, we'll find somebody exciting and interesting as we've had Mark and, and Kevin on our show. That's a wrap from all of us to the whole team behind the scenes who uh, uh, play, a, play a part and make us sound and look good. We thank them as well. From Warren Linferner, Kevin Rice, Mark Dixon, Andrew Harrison and the whole team, thanks very much and we'll see you as always in the number one box. Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. We hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here and uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy in the box seat podcast from last week